I was on the subway trying to get to the 47th Street stop so I could transfer to the Eaglewood stop and finally get home. Boss had kept me nearly two hours longer than everybody else, mainly because I was the new guy and I needed the money. I'm Willis. Let's keep this short. Two hours overtime ain't nothing to sneeze at. Not when it meant I could afford the new edition of I'm a Star doll for my sister. The doll had everything. Modulated hips so it could do the splits, three sets of interchangeable wigs, and several extra outfits, like glasses and a lab coat so she could go to work, or a cute little dress she could go out dancing in, or old sweats and bunny slippers and a remote control for a night of lounging with the girls. It had been ages since I'd hung out with the guys, even longer since I'd hung out with my dumb jock ex-boyfriend. We broke up. I'm single, and I keep telling myself that I'm happier. Truth is, I miss having somebody to hang out with. My phone chimed with an incoming text from Mom. She said, Your grandparents just arrived. We haven't seen Madeline's son yet. So you're not the last to arrive. Where are you? Madeline was Mom's best friend from work. Divorced two children. Jake, her son, is in college now. And Janelle is the same age as my sister. I get off for the transfer in five. I get off for the transfer in five. It took Mom a moment to reply, but when she did, her words chilled my soul. Did you remember the batteries? I pulled the package out of the pink gift bag and read it. It doesn't need batteries. It's just a doll. Don't you ever use your brain, Mom said. The car that went with the doll does. Didn't you get my text? No, I replied. Some of us have to work, Mom. Before Mom could send another text, I scrolled through my daily texts. They came from the usual family and friends and some from workers, and one came from a number I didn't recognize. Wrong number, I guess. I found the extra message from Mom, buried with pictures of the party decorations. The little car sat in the middle of the table. It was bright pink and covered with little yellow flowers. It had yellow seats and fuchsia-colored tires. The little car required four AA batteries and four more triple-A batteries for the remote control. Crap. Why hadn't Mom sent a second text when I hadn't responded to the first? She did send another text right now. You've ruined your sister's party. For once, can't you think of somebody else besides yourself? The subway slowed to a stop. I got off and looked through the crowd of people about me. I didn't recognize anybody. According to the schedule, I had just under ten minutes to wait before the next train arrived. Stop the presses. Maybe the upstairs ticket booth sold batteries? If only I could be so lucky. I ran up the stairs, ran to the ticket booth, but I was out of luck. The little kiosk only held hard copy newspapers and magazines and sold tickets for the subway. Don't I know you? A voice said behind me. I turned. He was familiar, though I hadn't seen him for years. Jake? I asked. Aren't you Madeline's son? Guilty. I'm waiting for the next train, he said. And you are Willis? I smiled as I said. The man that wrecked the party. I forgot to buy batteries. Jake chuckled and said, A genuine party killer. What would you say if I told you there was a gas and go across the street? You coming? We sprinted out of the subway, ran across the street, bought batteries and drinks, and barely made it back in time to run aboard the subway. Laughing. We found some seats near the back, and I texted Mom that we had the batteries. I laughed with Jake and said, that was the most exciting first date I've had for a long time. What are we going to do to top this? 
Jake leaned in close and said, I have a couple of ideas. Doing anything Saturday afternoon? I have tickets to the preseason hockey exhibition game between Vegas and Fresno at the Capitol Arena. Want to go with me? Can I buy us dinner at Gordon's Gourmet Burgers afterwards, I asked. Technically, that was the second date of our relationship. And I've never regretted it. I think we're on something like the 500th date now. I think we're on something like the 100th date now. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm Gio, writer and reader of this piece. I appreciate you stopping by. If you'd like to hear more stories about gay men falling in love, please stop by my channel. I apologize for the shortness of this piece, but... Boy, did I have a lot of doctor's appointments this week. And tests, and a dentist appointment. And I have new medication... And all my writing time got sucked out the window. So we just had a short piece. I'm working on a longer piece, which will come out next week. I'm thinking for the time being I'll do short pieces, then longer pieces, short pieces, then longer pieces, and alternate between them. Because <laughs> my timing is not very good right now. Anyway, thank you for visiting. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.